Welcome back YouTube. This is my final thoughts video on the 2020 Silverado 1500 Duramax with the LM2 engine. Owned it for 38 months and put 51,667 miles on it. Had a few issues, but we're going to get into all the things that I've done. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments and let me know what else you'd like to see. So one of the things that you guys may have noticed right off the bat is that I decided to change out the tires actually before one of my really big trips, the trip out to Yellowstone. So I put on these Wrangler Ultra Terrain tires because I knew that I was planning on going off-road a little bit while I was out there, and I also wanted something that was e-load rated. That wasn't actually a great decision. Turns out the Ultra Terrain is a tire that's extremely difficult to balance, and Essentially, since I put those on there, I've always had a little bit of a shake, especially when you get around 70 miles an hour. So that's something that was a little bit of a mistake on my side. So something else that's a little less obvious to everybody, I have actually, and again, I purchased all this stuff on with my own money, um, no sponsorships, no nothing. So I've purchased the Sumo Springs, and I also purchased the Timberin SES system. And one of the trips that I took, we actually utilized the Timberin system. And at the end of the day, I ended up switching over to the Firestone airbag system. So you may ask, why did I do something like that? Uh, it turns out not, it does not increase the towing capacity. It doesn't increase the, increase the weight carrying capacity. For me, it was more about not having to hit the bump stops. I make sure that whenever I'm towing something that I it stay within the ratings of the rear axle. So it wasn't anything about me trying to put more weight on the truck, it was more about the overall comfort. And speaking about comfort, I ended up waiting until Rancho had the RS9000 adjustable shock absorbers ready which turned out to be a little bit later due to the overall you know, pandemic and everything that shut down. So I did end up replacing the shocks and here's the part number. It's the RS999198, um, the RS9000 XL shock series that were installed on the truck. I took those off before I traded it in. So here's the shock before it was actually released and, and extended so it could go on the truck highly recommend these if you want the ability to adjust from a stiffer ride to a softer ride. They work really really well. Another highly recommended item for myself is to get one of these fuel caps that allow you to basically cover up the opening for the diesel fuel especially since the def filler is so close to the diesel fuel filler. Uh, one thing that I did notice here is there is actually a very small crack. You'll see that there at the top in the plastic section, not caused by this uh, cap that covers the fuel filler. Sometimes we drive in dusty environments, and it, I think it's personally really good to have something to be able to keep that dust and any death from potentially getting in the filler. So next I'd like to go through and talk to you guys about some of the statistics for the truck. So after 51,668 miles, overall I was averaging 15.6 miles per gallon. I try not to reset at least one of the two trip odometers that exist in the vehicles. That way I'm able to track the overall fuel economy that I get when I own the vehicle. Now granted, something that I haven't said is basically over 50% of the time this truck was actually towing one of my trailers. So 16 and a half miles per gallon for over 26,000 miles worth of towing I think is super great. So I don't expect that I would have gotten that with any gas V8 truck. So now let's talk about brakes. The truck after 51,668 miles had 80% available on the front remaining and 88%. Nothing was done with the brakes. General Motors with their Duralife rotors, those things work great. In theory, the front brakes should have lasted 258,000 miles, give or take a few, and the rear brakes should last 430,000 miles. Now, I live in Michigan. We have a lot of snow, salt, 
um, on the roads and my expectation is that rust would take over and the brake life monitor doesn't take into account that type of use. It only takes into account uh, the amount of wear that could be created by the force that you put on the brakes at any one point in time. So in theory, the last more than the life of the truck, but in Michigan, my guess is I'd be replacing them in a couple of years. Next, we'll take a look at some of the fuel economy numbers. The best that I was able to achieve over a 25 mile span was 48.3 miles per gallon. Over a 50 mile span, it was 36.6 miles per gallon. And over a 400 mile span, it was 30.6 miles per gallon. Now, circling back to the ultra terrains that I put on the truck, as soon as those were installed, I actually did see a loss in fuel economy compared to the original Goodyear tires that came with the truck. I ended up getting around 26 to 27 miles per gallon on the freeway before I would get above 30 most of the time, but the traction that these tires offered was amazing. So it's a trade-off always with traction versus fuel economy and I took the traction for what it was worth. Looking at the fuel filter, I had replaced the fuel filter twice on the truck and it currently had 42% life still remaining. I did end up replacing the air filter one time during the first 51,000 miles and that still had 80% life remaining. Here's a picture of the actual filter that I purchased. Most of the time I end up using all AC Delco products when I do my own repairs. Now I want to switch gears on you guys. When the truck was just over two years old, I actually took it to Yellowstone National Park. We took a trip from Michigan all the way out to Yellowstone, came back through Kansas, and made one monster loop. This trip was actually fairly uneventful. The one thing that I didn't care for so much was, of course, the exhaust brake, the way that that works. I'm hoping that future revisions of the truck, they'll update some of those things. But after returning home, here's what I found. After all those miles of towing, basically there was a cross-threaded bolt there. I stopped at a drive through and basically started hearing this little bit of rattling going on so got underneath the truck and found that the heat shield was actually loose. So this was during pandemic times of course and trying to get parts for the truck uh, wasn't a very easy thing to do so it was my first opportunity to rent a Ram Cummins uh, 2500 from Enterprise rent -a truck Again GM did end up paying for some of the truck, but of course not all of the rental. I end up, you know, towing a lot, so this was my opportunity to actually try out a Ram Cummins pickup truck. And it turns out this wasn't the only time that I had to do this, but there's more on that to come. So after receiving the truck back, it took about three weeks for them to get everything fixed. They had replaced a bolt also in the exhaust, so I decided to get under there and take a look. And if you'll notice the one wire, it actually looks really taut. So I ended up moving that wire. This was basically an inspection of all of the different spots. I was trying to figure out which bolts they had, had replaced, and it's a little bit difficult for me to tell. So you'll notice after I moved it, there's a witness mark on the metal there where the wire was at, and there's also a witness mark right there where it was up against that one bracket on the exhaust, but I'm also not sure how the routing was really supposed to go, but this tended to relieve a pressure point that I was a little bit concerned about. So that brings us to this last Easter. On our way down to Austin, we were actually towing the camper, and we ended up with a fault and it turns out the fault is related to the EGR wiring the actual wiring harness that goes down to the EGR cooler you'll notice a couple of things there I did actually buy a Banks eye gauge um, 
This is a little test that I ran. So the engine actually shifts a little bit. You'll notice that the fans here are running at full speed when the sensors aren't working. So it seemed like every time that you would let off on the throttle, the wires would get moved, the sensor would go bad. So I ended up zip tying the harness to get it so that it would not be interfering with the sound deadening material. And that tended to work okay for the rest of the trip. Once I got back, I ended up doing some more evaluation here and figured out that the it is that wiring harness that's at the Y location. Depending on how you bend it would determine whether the sensor for the EGR cooler would actually be reading or not. The fans would come on, full blast. Uh, so I did all this before I actually took it to the dealership. That way I had something to basically show them how to reproduce it. It's not something that was going to get better on its own, uh, but I needed to make sure that they had some place that they could look at and get it repaired. So this was the second opportunity that I had to rent a three-quarter ton Dodge Ram with a Cummins engine. GM did take care of all of the repair costs for fixing that particular problem, but they didn't pay for the truck, which I was okay with. You guys already know, based on my last video that I posted, that I'm going to stick with the half ton at least for this next truck that I'm going to be driving. The inline 3 liter GM diesel I think is a super smooth engine. The transmission is amazing. Going to the Cummins with the 6 speed, you just don't have it. The frame is stiffer actually on the half ton than it is on the 3 quarter ton Ram. So overall ride quality is much better. Steering quality is much better. As long as you're not trying to tow something that's absolutely huge, the half-ton Chevy Silverado is the way to go. Now, one of you guys has made some comments about the, the truck itself and the tailgate. Just to show you guys, I did replace the tailgate, and I did end up changing out the LT badge for the LTZ. I ended up having to move all of the interior interior items from the original tailgate with the hole in it uh, over to the new tailgate which was from a junkyard but it was still in excellent shape I wanted to make sure that the paint matched and that's the best way to get it done so if you guys have any questions any comments please feel free throw them in the comments section if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to the channel the LZ0 now has 500 miles on it so I'm going to be ramping up running very similar tests to what I ran with this one so I look forward to giving you guys content